Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going back into the guided topic tests and in response to one of the comments on my last video, we're going to switch gears from the reading test to the writing test. In today's video, we're going to have a look at questions 51 and 52 from the writing test. So not the essays, but just the short answer questions where you complete the sentence. In a later video, I'll have a look more in depth at the essay writing and some tips for that, but in this video we're just going to stick to the short answer questions from the writing test. As always, let me know in the comments below what you think of this format, and let me know if there are any specific questions that you want me to have a look at in the future. Okay, so let's have a look at the 35th topic test and question 51. Now it's question 51 because the listening test and the writing test are done in the same session. So once you finish the listening test and the audio file has finished playing, you'll move on to the writing test. Um, so make sure you follow the instructions carefully uh, as how to transition between those. Um, so for the writing test, if you've seen my topic explanation video, you'll know that there are four questions. Two of them are questions where you have to complete the sentence as you see here. So you have a text and you'll have to input something into these blank spaces. And you'll have a uh, section in the writing paper where you can just write however you want. For question 51 and 52, you don't have to use Wongoji, the Korean um, cell paper. You just write it straight out onto the answer sheet. And usually for both of these questions, it's quite subjective. So there are multiple correct answers depending on how you interpret the text itself. But generally they're looking for a fairly simple answer. Um, they're looking for you to use a certain grammatical point at the end. They're looking for you to use maybe the words from the text, but also some words that you've come up with yourself. Um, and really they're looking for you to match your own level of writing. So obviously it's good to use some more advanced words and advanced grammar structures if you can, but my advice would be keep it at your level. If you are going for topic three or four, don't make it too complicated. Just write something that makes sense. Um, that's grammatically right. The, basically the more chances you take, the more things you add in there, the more chances it can be wrong. So um, yeah, I, my advice would be to keep it fairly simple um, and use what you're comfortable using. So we're gonna read this together. A lot of the question, a lot of the skill involved in this question is understanding exactly what the paragraph is about and what they're hinting at in terms of what you should write here. So let's read it together. 저는 유학생인데 공부를 마치고 다음 주에 고향으로 돌아갑니다. 그래서 지금 뭐뭐뭐. 책상, 의자, 컴퓨터, 공용학 전공 책 등이 있습니다. 이번 주 금요일까지 방을 비워줘야 합니다. 뭐뭐뭐. 제 전화번호는 010-1234-5678입니다. So we have two different sections here that we need to fill in. Um, for the first one, we have a few things at the start of the sentence, but the second one is creating an entire sentence by yourself. So these ones where you have to put in an entire sentence can actually be slightly harder sometimes because you have less direction of what to write, but we'll have a look at both of them together. So I'm not going to go through every word like I usually do because it'll take a bit too long to read through the whole thing together. But the meaning of this is saying, I'm a foreign student, international student, and I've finished my studies. So next week I'm going back to my hometown. So now something. And it's really important to have a look at these words at the start. If it's kureso, kuronde, or kurochiman, that'll really inform you of what you need to write in the next sentence. So they're going back to their hometown. So something. We need to figure out what to put here. Then you look at the next sentence to get some context. They're saying we have a desk, a chair, a computer, um, a management textbook, dot, uh, dot, dot, dot. Uh, there are. So dungi is like, etc. cetera. does, there are. So I have these things on offer. Um, and then the other thing you need to make sure you look at is the title. So the title here is Muryoro Durimnida. I give it for free. I'm giving it for free. So from all this context, you can guess pretty simply that they finished their studies, so they need to now give away the things that they've used in that time. Um, and we know it's give away for free because it's muriodo, for free. So you could complete the sentence in a number of different ways in English. You could say, so I'm trying to organize my things that I've been using, 
or maybe I want to give away the things that I can't take with me. There are a lot of different ways you can answer it. As long as it is logically correct and makes sense within the context, um, you can answer this question however you like. But again, I would give you the advice to keep it as simple as you can. Okay, so one possible answer could be 그동안 사용했던 제 물건들을 정리하려고 합니다. So it's saying I'm trying to organize or I'm, I'm, my goal is to organize the uh, my items which I have been using during that time. So this has a few sort of um, slightly advanced grammatical points and things like the word order and putting this het don in. It's quite a nuanced grammatical point, but this could be one good answer. Another good, good one could be 공부하는 동안 썼던 제 물건들을 다른 분들께 무료로 드리고 싶습니다. So they're saying, I want to give for free uh, to other people my items which I have been using while I was studying. Again, quite a long sentence and slightly more advanced. Um, maybe a slightly easier one could be something like this. 가져갈 수 없는 것들을 정리할 예정입니다. So the things uh, I want to, or I'm planning to organize the things that I can't take with me. So again, there's lots of different ways you can answer this question. As long as it makes sense within the paragraph and you write everything grammatically correct and um, you spell everything correct and things like that, you should get a good score for this one. But again, keep it as simple as it needs to be for you to get it correct. Um, again, in other words, don't overcomplicate it if you're not comfortable doing that. Just keep it at your level. Okay, let's look at the rest of the question now. So after they listed all the things that they have on offer, they're saying, by this Friday, I have to clear my room. So, 이번 주 금요일까지 방을 비워줘야 합니다. And then we have a complete blank slate here that we can put in, but it's followed by them giving their phone number. So, basically, always use the context from the previous sentence and then always check with the following sentence to get an idea of what you have to write. So, the previous sentence, the important thing here is saying 금요일까지, so by Friday. That's a very important piece of information. And in the next sentence, they're giving their phone number. So you could fill this in in a number of ways, but they're all going to mean something like, um, if you're interested, contact me by Friday or by even by Thursday or by this week or whatever. So um, a good answer for this could be, 그러니까, and so, 물건이 필요하신 분들은 금요일 전까지 연락해 주시기 바랍니다. It's saying, if you're interested, basically, those who are interested in these items um, should contact me before this Friday or before Friday. Um, so that's a good answer for that one. Uh, you could make it, um, you don't have to say it with all the, the same grammatical ending at the end. There's lots of different ways you could say it, but Hejushigi Baramnida is the most sort of formal way of, um, of requesting something. Um, another Possible answer could be something like this. 관심이 있으신 분들은 목요일까지 전화해 주시기 바랍니다. So pretty similar to the previous one, but instead of saying if you're interested in the items, it's just saying if you are interested or... Sorry, the previous one was saying if you need the items. This one's saying if you're interested. And, you know, contact me by Thursday. Um, saying call me instead of contact me. Other than that, pretty much the same. Another option could be uh, 이 물건들이 필요하신 분들은 이번 주 내에 저한테 연락 부탁드립니다. So, 연락 부탁드립니다 is a very common way of saying contact me, get in touch. Um, and again, quite similar. If you are people who need these items uh, within this week, 이번 주 내에. Um, so, yeah, you have quite a lot of freedom to write how you like as long as it makes sense. So, all the answers for this would be acceptable. By this Friday, uh, before this Friday, by Thursday, within this week, they all make sense in the context. So, again, keep it uh, keep it fairly simple. If you need to write whatever you can that makes sense, and as long as you match the logic of the text, you should be fine. Okay, let's move on to question fifty-two. Again, we're going to read the text as a whole and then have a look at what the possible answers could be. So, 퍼즐은 여러 개의 조각을 모두 제 위치에 놓아야. 하나의 그림이 완성된다. 그런데 만일 뭐뭐뭐 사회와 개인의 관계도 마찬가지이다. 사회를 구성하는 모든 개인도 있어야 할 자리에 있어야 한다. 그래야 뭐뭐뭐. So 
question 52 is usually a slightly more advanced text and you'll also notice that while question 51 was in Jondenmar or ending in Hamnida, Samnida, uh, question 52 is usually just in plain form. So it's usually more of a sort of a lecture style or a book style. Um, so let's just read through the basic translation. It's saying a puzzle, um, a puzzle must have all of its pieces in the correct place for it to be completed. Um, so word by word, the puzzle, uh, yoroke, so like many pieces, all uh, je wichi is the correct place. So je can also be like je shigan at the right time, je wichi, right place, je chari, the right place. Um, in the right place, must you must put, in this case it's jogag u, Noaya, you must put each piece in the right place. Hanae gurim, one picture, one song twenda, it become, uh, it it completes or it is finished basically. It is finished as one one picture. Um, however, if something, so again, it's very important to notice that it says kuronde. However, so whatever comes here will be contrasting with the previous sentence. So every puzzle piece is in its right place, meaning that the puzzle is completed. The next sentence will be something opposite of that, pretty much. Again, we check with the next sentence to make sure. Sahwe wa gain e guange do machan kajida. So it's saying uh, society and individual relationship, or the relationship between society and the individual, is the same thing. So we're basically making a comparison between a puzzle and society. That's what they want you to write about. So we can now do this section here. Um, we can see that this bit here won't relate to the next section that much. Um, it's mostly going to be just the opposite of this one here. So what we want to say is, however, manir, if the piece is not in the correct place, or if the pieces are not in their right place, then the picture is not finished. So basically just the opposite of what the, um, the previous sentence said. So let's have a look at some possible answers. We have Pojur jogagi je chariye noiji annamyan kurimi wansong dweji annanda. So very, um, very plain, really. It uses all the same words pretty much as the previous sentence and just saying the opposite. So, kronde mania, if the puzzle plate piece je chari, so je chari and je wichi are the same thing, noiji annamyan. So just notice here. You have to pay attention to how they're writing it, and this can come up in some other questions as well, so be careful. In the original sentence, we had joga gu no aya. So we have put the piece, and the piece is the object, put the piece. However, in this sentence, we're saying joga gi no ita, no, no iji, no ita. So it is put, basically. The piece is put. It's kind of like a passive construction, and you'll see that the subject is now jogak instead of the object being jogak. So we're saying if the puzzle piece is not put in its correct place, the picture is not complete. So yeah, quite simply just saying the opposite of the previous sentence. To give you a sense of how this active and passive voice could switch around, you could also say all of this uh, flipping the active and passive. So poju jogagur je chariye nochi anandamyan gurimur wansong hauswopta. Um, so a slightly different ending, but you get the idea where instead of saying noichi anandamyan, we're saying nochi anandamyan, and jogak is now the object. Um, same thing here. Instead of saying the picture is completed, we're saying you complete the picture. Kudimu wansong hada, wansong hauswopta. So basically, in this case, it's just flipping around to the opposite of the previous sentence. All right, let's look at the rest of the sentence here. So we already saw that it's now making a comparison to society and individuals. So we said it was the same thing. So it's saying um, the so every individual that makes up society must be in its the place where it has to be. That that would be a relative clause saying the place where it has to be. Isoya haljari. So isoya haljariye, isoya handa. It has to be. So just like puzzle pieces, um, every person that makes up society must be in its place, in the place where it has to be. And now we have the final sentence. Again, we're 
um, we have a hint about what we need to say with this first word, kudeya. So before we had kuronde, indicating that it's a, con um, a contrast, but here kudeya. Kudeya means only if that is the case. So only in that case, or, um, or um, that must be true in order for something else to happen. So kudeya, only in that case can something happen. Now we know we're making a comparison to a puzzle and we're saying that the if all the pieces of the puzzle are correct, then the picture is complete. So now continuing the simile, we're saying if all of the individuals in society are in the correct place, then something happens. Um, so again, you have quite a lot of freedom here for what to write. Uh, basically, it's all going to be something like society functions well, or society is a whole, or anything like that that creates a um, that creates a, an adequate simile here. So one good answer here could be biroso sahue ga hanaro dorakagi demunida. So it's because um, in the end, society can uh, can turn as a whole, basically. Hanado as as one, dorakagi demunida. It it works or it goes as a whole, as one. Another one could be sahue ga ginen hausuiki demunida. So society can function, or it's because society can function. Um, fully with the sentence, it's only if that is the case, then so society can function. Um, another example, Pajur Chodom, Sahwega, one song, Dresuita. So society can be completed just like a puzzle. Um, again, continuing the simile from before. So, yeah, as you might notice, you have a lot of options here. You have a lot of freedom to write whatever you like. Uh, just make sure that it makes sense within the context of the, um, of the text. All right, let's move on to the 36th topic test. We're looking again at 51. And in this case, you'll see, again, question 51 is written in John Neymar with Sumnida. And it's a, in this case, it's the form of an email. So the previous one was like an ad, uh, some sort of personal ad. In this case, it's an email. So you'll see a theme. Generally, 51 is about talking to somebody in a, um, in a formal setting. And 52 is more of a, a lecture style thing. So I'm going to bring this down here so we can see. We have this email picture here, and we just have to fill in the empty spaces. So, Kim Youngmi Kyosu Nim Ke, Annyeong Haseyo, Hanguk Okwa Samhang Nyon Jenny Imnida, Ibonju Gumyoere, Bwebgiro Hangot Demne, Yolak Duryosumnida, Kuronde, Momomo, Jongmal Chwesong Hamnida, Hokshi, Momomo, Tapjang Jushimen, Kamsagi Sumida, Jenny Ulim. So for this one, the important thing to notice is one has a full stop at the end and one has a question mark. So you have to write a statement for one and a question for the other one. And then again, just like the previous one, we're going to look at the previous sentence, the next sentence, and also the sort of hint word at the start. So we have uh, to Kim Young Mi Professor. Hello, I am. This is Jenny. Um, in, who's a third year in the Korean studies department. Um, so I contacted you because of the meeting, or, um, because we had decided to meet this Friday, basically. 이번 주 금요일에 웹기로 한 것은 웹기로 하다, be like deciding to meet. Because of that, 그거 한것 때문에 연락도 왔습니다. I contacted you. However, something. And then she says, I'm very sorry. So it's pretty easy to guess from this that she's saying um, I have to cancel that appointment or I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. So we're going to fill this in by saying something about that. So you could say something like some other uh, some other appointment came up, some, something came up, uh, I won't be able to attend. Anything like that that makes sense in this context, you could put here. I don't have space to put the examples at the bottom of the screen anymore, but just have a look in the description below and I'll write out all of the possible answers that I'm saying here. So one possible uh, answer could be So it'll be hard for me to meet you this Friday. Um, alternatively, you could say something like So something came up on Friday. Something else has come up on Friday. Or you could say So it'll be hard to meet you on Friday because some other some other event, some other thing came up. Um, so you have quite a lot of freedom again for how to write it, as long as it answers the question of why you're not going to be able to 
come on Friday. So then the email says, I'm very sorry. Now we have a question. And then, so I would be thankful if you respond. So we know that she said sorry and she's cancelled the meeting, but she said, Hokshi um, is kind of hard to translate into English, but it's sort of like um, perhaps or uh, by any chance would probably be a good translation. By any chance, something else. So because it's a question and because she's cancelled the previous meeting and asking now, maybe by any chance, could you do this? It's probably trying to reschedule the meeting. So something like, when would be a good time to meet? Or when are you available to meet? Um, or can you tell me when when is a good time for you? Something like that in English would work well. So a good um, a good example here could be, onje shiga ni kwenchanushimnika? Uh, or onje shiga ni dweshimnika? So when do you have time? When are you available? Or kwenchanushin shiganur maushumhe jushigesimnika? Like, will you tell me a time when you are available? Um, or you could even be more specific and say, maybe, are you free next week on Friday? So, Hokshi uh, is here. And then you could say, Daomju gumuire buedo kado dwegesimnika. Like, is it okay if I come see you next Friday instead? So, again, follow the logic of the email, um, match it to the complexity that is okay for you. And yeah, your answers, hopefully, um, uh, as long as you follow whatever grammatical points that you know how to use, they should be fine. Okay, let's look at the last question together. Um, so question 52, again, we've gone back to the plain form, the sort of lecture style, book style writing. And again, we're gonna have a look through here, um, read the question and try and fill in the blanks. So, Gihwe는 어떤 사람에게 명예와 부를 안겨준다. 기회를 통해서 평범한 사람이 유명해지기도 하고 뭐뭐뭐. 이런 변화를 보고 사람들은 자신에게도 그런 기회가 찾아오기를 기다린다. 그러나 실제로 뭐뭐뭐. 이렇게 기회를 잘 이용하지 못하는 것은 기회를 잡으려는 준비를 하지 않았기 때문이다. So again, slightly more complex than the previous one. The level of vocabulary is a little bit higher as well. But if we look through it, we should hopefully be able to figure out what we need to write here. So let's read through the question and make sure we know what everything means. It's saying opportunities to certain people uh, bestow honor and wealth. Um, I mean, you could say bestow ankita or Anta means to hug or embrace. Ankida would mean to cause somebody to embrace. So, um, yeah, to put into somebody's arms, maybe, would be a good way of saying it. Um, yeah, in English, maybe you say bestow or something like that. So it's talking about opportunities. Um, the next sentence, we actually have to finish this one. So we need to really be really careful in how we read this. Gihweru tongheso. So through opportunities, a uh, an ordinary person can become famous and so you mean heji gido hago and whenever you have hagido hago the next thing at the end is often going to be the same thing hagido handa so bomo hagido hago momo mo hagido handa um so it's saying they can become famous that's one thing that can happen and this is another thing that can happen so you just have to give another example um of how an opportunity can benefit somebody so we've already seen becoming famous that sort of addresses the honor part of it Myung-ye. so it probably makes sense to talk about the wealth part bu. so a very basic solution to this would be a poor person can become rich so through opportunities an ordinary person can become famous and a poor person can become rich so um yeah a good example uh, a good solution to this would be kanan han sarami Pujaga dwegido handa. So again, this one finishes in hagido hago. So the answer often will finish in hagido handa, dwegido handa. Um, you could also even take out ganan han saram. So you could just say pujaga dwegido handa. Because if you look at the sentence, it's pyongbom han sarami. So an ordinary person. And then this whole thing could be talking about what can happen to an ordinary person. So yumyong hejigido hago, pujaga uh, dwegido handa. So an ordinary person can become rich and they can become famous or the other way around. 
Um, so that would be a good answer for that one. Let's keep going. We say, Iron Pyonhwaru Boko. So, seeing this change, or um, they see this change, and people wait or sort of expect that type of opportunity to come to them as well. Let's go, do to themselves as well. Kuron gihwe that kind of opportunity. Chaja o girir kiradinda are waiting for that kind of opportunity to come. Um Kurona. So here again we have this hint word that's telling us however. So it's saying that whatever we write, it needs to be a contrast to the previous information. So Shichero, in reality, something happens. Um now, you'll notice in the next sentence, it starts with irokke. And this is really important because irokke means in this way. So this information here is relating to the previous sentence, which we have to write. So it's really important here to um, take into account the sentence after the thing that we're writing. So in this way, not using an opportunity well is, uh, is because... Um, you weren't prepared to grab that opportunity, basically. So, again, we now have all the information we need to answer it. We know that this bit is going to be the opposite. It's going to be contrast to this first section about um, opportunities giving wealth and, and honor to some people. So it's basically going to be saying some people don't get all these benefits. And it's also going to be talking about um, people not utilizing an opportunity. So a good answer for this one would be something like um, there are many people who who do not utilize an opportunity when it comes. So and then it would be talking about so they don't get the uh, the benefits that some other people do. So a good example for this could be gihwe ga wa do ku gihwe ru jari iyonghaji motanda. Um so it's saying they there's actually there's no um there's no subject here really about who's using it but it's saying they don't use the opportunity well even if it comes or even if an opportunity comes they don't use that opportunity well um, another good example could be manta. so again this addresses all of the criteria it's saying that some people don't use uh, don't get benefits from opportunities and it's also saying people don't use the opportunities that come. So, the opportunity that comes or that arises. There are many people who miss that opportunity, basically. There are many people who miss the opportunities when they come. Um, another way of saying basically the same thing could be So, if an opportunity comes or if an opportunity arises, so there are many people who do not utilize it or can't utilize it. Um, so all of these are saying basically the same thing. It's saying that um, in contrast to these people who benefit from opportunities, some people who do not use it well miss out pretty much. And again, you have a lot of creativity, a lot of freedom to write whatever you want. Um, and like I've said before, keep it at the level that you are at. So don't write... Don't write really complicated sentences just for the sake of being complicated. Um, it's better to write a simple sentence that's grammatically correct than to write a you know, more complicated or more grammatically advanced sentence, but maybe have some mistakes or uh, get something slightly wrong in it. So keep it at your level and just write whatever you feel comfortable with. So I hope this video was useful again. As always, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this video or if there are any questions from the topic test that you want me to go through. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.